Hey there, this is Alana. I wanted to record a quick video for you today to provide some tips and tricks to ensure you're seeing the right data from day one in your BrightGage account. So during this video, I'll be covering where to find the default metrics, some commonly used filters to update our defaults so the gauges sync with your internal workflows, best practices within the gauge builder, how to customize dashboards, and where to find resources to help you with self-learning. So I'm gonna jump right into the gauge library. This is where you'll find all of your default metrics. And this list can be a bit intimidating, especially if you have a lot of data sources configured. So I'd always recommend coming over here to the search bar, looking for a particular KPI or metric. Uh, you can also filter here by gauge type and by data source. So I'm actually gonna start with a, an open tickets gauge. Now we're in the gauge builder. And I'd say the most important thing to keep in mind when you're working with our defaults is that we don't filter for specific boards or statuses, right? So we're looking at a simple number gauge here. The only filter is this closed flag field. Uh, so I'd recommend immediately pulling over a board filter. And I wanna look at maybe just my critical alerts and my service desk. So we can see that number drops significantly just by adding a board filter. And the other commonly used filter is a status field, right? We wanna make sure we're covering all of our bases. You may not use closed flag in your instance. So here we're looking at an open tickets gauge. So I'm actually gonna select is not, and I'm gonna look for anything that's completed, canceled or resolved. Probably won't have as many fields in your instance but I just wanna select all of these so we got completed. Now I'm gonna check off these resolved fields. And the number dropped a little bit here as well. And while we're here, I'd like to point out a few more noteworthy areas in the gauge builder. Um, so as I mentioned before, we started with a simple number gauge. If I did wanna break down this information a bit further, um, I'd recommend starting with a table gauge. That way this dimension field is populated. And maybe we want to break this down by company. So I'm just going to pull this company name field over. Now we have a nice breakout of those open tickets. So from here, now that we have a dimension, we can actually turn this into a nice visual, maybe some sort of bar graph or line graph or pie chart. I'm actually just going to remove the dimension and just keep it as a simple number gauge. And from here, I'd like to show you one design trick. So you can actually set up sound and color thresholds, right? So let's say I wanna see uh, anything that's greater than 10 open tickets. I want this number to actually turn red. Uh, so when I hit apply, here we can see this changed colors. Uh, and this is a great way to kind of point your eye uh, to critical metrics or gauges, especially if they're up on a monitor. Now we can go back to the data tab and I just wanted to note, you may need to add more filters here, right? Depending on what you're looking for or some sort of date range. Um, but there's a long list of these fields on the left-hand side. So just in case you ever need to know what's living inside of these blue pills, uh, I'd always recommend coming over to the ticket statistics data set detail section. So this is the first 100 rows of raw data from this data set. So all these column titles, ID, ticket number, company name, those are those blue pills on the left-hand side that we're dragging and dropping. So this is a great way to cross-reference your data uh, just to make sure you know what you're working with. And from here, uh, best practices, just wanna note uh, since we did start with a default and made some modifications, uh, we always recommend creating a new copy so you don't override that default. So we're actually just gonna hit the word save. We're gonna create a new copy. And I'm just gonna name this open tickets, service desk, and critical. And now we can save. Now I'd like to hop over to the dashboards show you how to customize those. A 
great so now we have this dashboard up and I want to add that gauge that I just modified so all I'm going to do is come over to this gauge button this drawer will open up and simply just check off the gauge title maybe I want to resize a little bit so it fits in here and that is perfect and also a common mistake that we see our customers make is they'll start creating individual gauges, whether it be for a client or an individual technician. And just to save you a lot of time, I want you to know that you have the ability to actually add a filter uh, on the dashboard level that will take care of all of the gauges. So if I were to turn on this Al's Coffee Shop filter, for example, all the gauges on here are now just gonna show me the information for this particular customer. And we will have a step-by-step -step video hyperlinked in this blog post to show you how to set up those dashboard filters. And one more tip I have for you, although we did not cover reports today, if you are going to be setting up client-facing reports, uh, instead of actually going to the reports section, you wanna make sure that you come over to the data section and set up your client mappings. Uh, that way our system knows which company to filter the gauges for, and you can also set up the recipients from that company who will be receiving the report. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, as far as self-learning, uh, I'd always recommend coming to our uh, knowledge base here in the help drop-down menu. So here you'll find a ton of useful resources along with how-to videos, customer showcase webinars, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also visit our blog at blog.brightgauge.com where you'll find some easily digestible content as well. And if you do have any questions or need help with anything at all, feel free to reach out to support at brightgauge.com.